right, so what we're working on today is a Nissan Xterra. And what I'm going to show today is right there, it has the engine designation number VG33E. That's the 3.3 liter dual overhead cam V6, which I've got this one taken apart quite a bit. But really, I'm just going to show where the crank position sensor is. It's under that little plate back there and I'm going to take that little plate off and we'll have a look at it in just a moment. It's kind of hard to take a video of any of this while I'm doing it plus with just one hand so let's get along to the next step and have a look. All right so I've got my my 10 millimeter socket on there. Get some of that junk out of the way and see if we can zoom in a little better. There's the sensor right there. There's my 10 millimeter socket. Right there. It's on that little nut there. And it's got like a heat shield. Like a little heat shield covering it up. So we're going to get that guy off of there. Alright, so I got the heat shield off as you can see. I took that one bolt out. And it's got that red line connected to it shake that little heat shield around well I can't even reach it it's laying down there but anyway that little red line there goes to one of the oxygen sensors okay and that shield holds it and then of course that same bolt that holds the shield on holds the sensor in so you could just pull that sensor out like this and get it there we go and there you are you got a sensor so I'm going to get a new one stuck on here and see how it looks. Alright, so here's the part number, PC241 from Intermotor, uh, SMP. It says it's made in, made in Taiwan. That's about it. So this is the new one. This is what it looks like. Just about exactly the same as the original. It's got a little tang here that holds it. This is the original. Okay. Now, when you try to get this plug off of there, I squeezed the thing and it crinkled and made funny sounds. Uh, but uh, you're going to want to push it and get that little guy to move up there. And if it sticks and it wants to give you trouble, you can shoot some WD-40 in there and try to get lubricated. Basically, it just has dirt. The dirt has leached in all around the sides. And when you want to get it out, man, that dirt is little particles or makes it very hard to pull out. So just be careful and take your time. WD-40 helps. But anyway, I'm going to get this thing to the next step and start putting it together. Okay, so I got the new one in there. Kind of difficult to see, but we've got it in there. And I'm just going to fish that screw down there with my hand and that heat shield. And the screw holds the little guy down all at the same time. And I'll see about getting it in there. Now I know a lot of people put this back together without the heat shield. Uh, and I'll probably regret doing that. But that heat shield does hold that wire. And I would like the things to stay the way they're supposed to stay. So the heat shield's going back. And let's get this thing to the next step. Alright, so I got it started. I don't know if anybody can see that. Well... There's the top of that bolt. I painted it yellow. And I got that thing started. I just kind of reached down there like this with my hand. And I held my finger on top of that bolt and popped it in there. Now, I'm doing this with the intake manifold off. So, if you're doing this from the bottom side, this is the what it looks like to help you get an idea of what's going on. And that's really the best view I can give without having a smaller camera or something, this is as good as it's gonna get, folks. Anyway, I'm gonna tighten that guy up and that's done. Have a good day.